and welcome to my watch reviews. Now, did you guess which one was the Hamilton? More on that later. So first of all, this watch has been loaned to me by First Class Watches. They are the UK's largest independent watch retailer and there'll be a link to their website in the description below. So this watch is the Hamilton PSR. It's a recreation of the Pulsar P2 which was an LED watch back in 1973. The Pulsar P1 was actually the world's first electronic digital watch. And at the time was such new technology that models were for those who had money to burn. The first model was made out of solid gold and was available for around about $2,100, which in today's money is probably over about $14,000. Uh, they turn out to be quite unreliable watches uh, due to the electronics and the way it was made but of course it was cutting edge but then pulsar in 1973 came out with the p2 and this model was much more reliable considerably cheaper but it still offered that exclusivity by this new way to tell the time and no need for a mechanical movement it was that good that roger moore also wore one as bond in live and let die to tell the time all you needed to do was press a button and the screen lit up with red led segments to make up all the numbers and then once you let go of the button the numbers disappear now batteries didn't last very long on these they were supposed to last a year but that was all dependent on how many times you pressed the button and i guess you were pressing that button a lot let's face it however as with all new tech other companies took this idea and mass produced it like Texas Instruments and even Sinclair here in the UK. And I've actually got one of those, although it is faulty. Um, they all jumped on the bandwagon and were able to offer this technology for the masses at a massively reduced price. And then eventually Hamilton were beaten at their own game and they sold the name Pulsar to Seiko. Hamilton launched the PSR in 2020 amongst all of that world pandemic so really bad timing but it was there to celebrate 50 years since the first pulsar now as i say this watch has got some uh, updated modifications so we've still got a quartz movement but we've got a quartz movement that batches will now last over five years is what they say and that's because the display that you can see there is lcd oled and when you press the button in darker conditions it's only then that you get the led so obviously technology has moved on now how do i feel about that you see i like original 70s led watches i've got a small collection of them and i think that this new one i think it's great that somebody's reproducing that um, genre uh, but there's something bit more special about the original ones because they were poorly made really the ones that I've got and when you press the buttons of course the light only comes on for a brief second so that is a clue really as to which one was the Hamilton at the start but again we're going to get to that in just a moment this particular version has got the PVD coating uh, so you can get it in the black you can get it in the stainless steel uh, there's also now a matrix version where it lights up green as opposed to red if you like that sort of thing uh, sizing it is quite a chunky thing with a strange diameter or width of 40.8 millimeters uh, the lug to lug is a sort of ambiguous 46 and the thickness is 13.5 millimeters the actual crystal sticks up about a millimeter and that is typical of the original as well so i guess the sizing is slightly thinner but this thing is a chunky monkey that is pretty eye-catching not to everybody's taste at all especially when it comes to price because these things i've seen retailing for near 800 pounds and um no not for me i think 800 pounds is a massive stretch for a watch like this to be honest with you it is really cool and really nice um but you've got to really want one i couldn't even put a price on i would be prepared perhaps to pay maybe 400 pounds but then 
<laughs> maybe I'm a cheapskate. I don't know. You're paying for the brand of Hamilton. You're paying for that history. Uh, I'd be more inclined uh, to save up and try and buy an original P2. The watch has got a really nice case back and I love my case backs that there is a pulsar. It's all engraved or embossed into the case back there. And let's have a closer look at the bracelet. So they're all solid links. Uh, the end links are actually screwed and then the rest are all pin and collar. Lots and lots of little ones, um, but really fiddly to set to your wrist. And then you've got a deployant clasp. Never a fan of deployants. They take ages to get to the right size. Um, but there you go. It is what it is. And uh, it does complete the look of the watch quite well, I think. And for good measure, got to press the button. Always got to press the button. There we go again. Another thing that I always like, and that's a watch box. And this is great. I love the design of the top of the box. Of course, inside, well, what do you get? It's just the usual pillow to put the watch on. And Hamilton there and of course there would normally be an instruction book it's very simple to set this watch all you got to do is push and hold the button and then you can change the time on it now this is my main concern and it's my main concern with all LED watches is the legibility certainly in summer which it is now uh, this is supposed to have some anti-reflective coating and of course it's still got that digital display uh, before the LED lights up but in the light conditions you cannot really read the time very well. If it's a traditional 1970s LED watch, trust me, you press that button, you see nothing. I really only wear my LEDs for winter. It's a winter watch. And what frustrates me also about this one is that the divider between the hours and the minutes doesn't blink. Now, it doesn't blink on the original ones either, but on most digital watches it does. And it just looks like it's doing something throughout the whole of this recording when i look at the footage it looks like i've just taken photographs but most of this is actual video footage but you don't see anything moving or anything exciting happening on the dial and i think that is really a bit of a missed opportunity and now for a bit of fun we can compare the new leds with a classic 70s old one this is a commodore from commodore 64 age and there you go as soon as you let go of the button it goes off the screen whereas the Hamilton stays on a lot longer. This one is a bell time. I often think it's a bit like a Cylon. Also tells the date as you can tell there every time I press it. This is a Trafalgar. I've got a few Trafalgars in this bit of video. There we go again. As you can see the 70s ones go off immediately. Here's another space age Trafalgar. And I think that the originals just light up just that little bit different. They're not pixelated like the Hamilton one is. Right, so now we've compared the old with the new. Did you get it right at the start of the video? Which one was the Hamilton against the original 70s ones? And of course, the answer was number four. I think it's pretty clear. The numbers are bigger and of course, they stay on longer. Hopefully you find that a bit useful or at least a little bit of fun. I have a lot of nostalgia for the original 1970s ones so what do i think of this one well as a recreation i think it's fantastic i think that hamilton looking back and picking that particular model to make it is so retro it's so me in many many ways um so i love it i really do it's been made very well it's from that obviously well-known brand so it's got all the history attached to it what i don't like of course is the price i still think it's far too much money it's not exactly all that exotic let's face it um, the lack of legibility in certain angles so you can't wear this all the time I don't think certainly that separator not blinking certainly when it's a, 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 an LCD watch behind the LED um, just you know I think it should have that really also the lack of date function I don't think the original did have the date but we have moved on 50 years and you could have quite easily had that where you press the button twice on the side and it come up with the date. Um, so there are a few little drawbacks, but I think just because you're harking back to history, it's a good recreation. It's pretty much one for one. 
and I have to admire Hamilton for doing that. So overall, I like it, just think it's a bit too expensive. Uh, so there we go, that's my review on this Hamilton. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, of course, hit the like button, leave comments below, I'll read every one, try to reply to as many as I can. And because this video is sponsored by First Class Watches, then I'd appreciate it if perhaps you click on the link below, go and check out their website, you never know, there may be a watch there ready for you to buy, who knows. Um, so I'll see you very soon in the next review. I've got some quite interesting ones coming up uh, very shortly, just working on them now. So as soon as they're ready, of course, they'll hit the channel. And if you want to see watch restorations and watch repairs, then of course, head over to the main channel, My Retro Watches. There's always going to be a link down below for that one, including my Facebook group, uh, Retro and Vintage Watches and Restorations. So I'll see you all in there very soon and uh, catch you in the next video. Bye for now.